The Lord Jesus in today's gospel uh, says something that we all want to experience. He says, whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. If you could get to that experience in your life where you are so convinced of God's blessing in your life and you have this feeling that all is well and all will be well in your life and in life itself, that's a good place to be. That's the peace of Jesus Christ in your heart. When you have this experience that God is with you. And Jesus says in the gospel that if we go to him, we're never going to hunger. If we believe in him, we will never thirst. In other words, if we have Jesus Christ in our heart, then we're going to feel and experience that life is good and life will be good always and forever. But you know, sometimes we have that experience, but then sometimes we go in the other direction. Sometimes we go in the other direction and we feel hunger for something more in our life. We feel hunger for peace in our heart, or we feel thirsty for, for something better to change in our life. If you look at the stories from the Old Testament, we see God's people, Israel, they kind of go through this experience too, where they have this experience, this profound experience of God being with them, of God blessing them and working so many miracles in their life. Then they go to a time of trial. And when they go through that time of trial, they start complaining against God's plan for them. And that can happen to us. We could have this experience where we feel that God is taking care of us. And then we go through some trial, and right away we start to question God's plan for us. I want to share to you an experience I had where in the space of a few hours, I had this experience of God's peace in my life. And then right after that, this experience of something trying to ruin that peace. So a number of years ago, I went on this, this journey with a, a friend of mine who was a deacon. His name was uh, Deacon George Nadef. And we were going to a place in Italy called the Holy House of Loreto. And it's a place where they say that there are stones from the house that the Blessed Virgin Mary lived in uh, with St. John the Evangelist. And those stones were taken from the Holy Land and brought to Italy. And they're now preserved in this small structure inside a church. It's called the Holy House of Loreto. So we went on this journey on the subway and, and we get to the church. It's kind of like a pretty big sized church, but you go in and there's a small structure inside. And that's the Holy House of Loreto. And they say that the stones around the walls are from the actual house that the Blessed Virgin Mary lives in. So I went into this little house and I'm telling you, the peace that I felt when I went in there was so powerful. I had this feeling that the Most Holy Trinity was right there. The Blessed Virgin Mary was right there. And I felt this peace in my heart. I felt that everything was well and everything was going to be well because God is with me and God is with us. It was great. And I'll never, I'll never forget that experience. It was so powerful. It wasn't like something I had to imagine. It was something that I, I went into it. It's like I walked into this unexpected peace. And that's a good feeling to have. When you feel that life is good because God is with you, that's something that we want. So we, we left our pilgrimage site and we got back on the subway, making our way back to Rome. And, and I was thinking a lot about that experience of peace. I said, I'm going to take this with me for the rest of my life. And I know that no matter what I face in my life's journey, I'm going to remember this peace that the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is victorious over anything that could threaten our life's journey. So we're on the subway and we come to one of our stops and this ride on the subway is going to be about two hours long. And we get to one of the stops along the journey and these two men get on the subway and they seem very angry. And they seem like they were influenced by a number of chemicals. And there's not many other people on the subway. They come right next to us, to me and Deacon George. Now, these two, they only spoke Italian. And they must not have liked Catholic priests or the church, because as soon as they saw my collar, 
they started shouting at us in Italian. And I don't know Italian, but I had this feeling that they were really angry and they didn't like us one bit. And so they're shouting at us and they walk away. Then they come back up to us and they walk away and they're shouting at us. And Deacon George, uh, he was about 60 years old. And in his previous life experience, he had been a, a wrestler, like an Olympic style wrestler. You know those Olympic wrestlers, if you get in a fight with them, they're going to they're gonna win. They're going to tie you up on a knot real quick. And, and Deacon George was a tough guy. But if you ever remember the kind of wrestling that is an act, there was a guy back in the 70s and 80s named uh, George the Animal Steel. My friend Deacon George looked exactly like George the Animal Steel. And I actually think he wanted to fight these guys on the subway because he's staring them down the whole time. And I don't want to fight. I have a background in martial arts, and I was thinking, yeah, we could have a fight, and it'd be really interesting, a, a wrestler deacon and a karate priest fighting on a... <laughs> it'd be great, wouldn't it? But I'm thinking to myself, fights in real life, they never go the way they do in the movies. And I'm like, I do not want to fight. So I'm trying to stay calm. I don't want to get in a fight with these guys. But Deacon George was staring them down. And then they... These two guys, they lit up cigarettes on the subway. And you're not supposed to smoke in the subway. So, but I wasn't going to say anything. I was like, I don't want to get these guys more angry. Well, Deacon George, he starts shouting at them. And he says, no fuma, no fuma, which means no smoking, no smoking. Well, these guys, they went through the roof. And they come right up to him, and they have their lit cigarettes, and they're putting them right into his face. Then they come over to me, and they're putting their cigarettes into my face. And I'm thinking to myself, all of that peace is gone, you know? Literally, I had this, I went from this feeling that God is with me and he's going to take care of my life to the exact opposite. And I'm like, something's not right here. It's kind of like the Israelites. They had this experience of God taking care of them. And then now they're going to the exact opposite. They start questioning God. So... That's kind of like an experience of life that we have. I guess I'll tell you how we managed to, to get out of this situation. It's not really part of my homily, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So, so Deacon George is staring at these guys, and he's, he starts taking off his watch. He puts his watch down, and then he's tightening up his shoes. And I'm like, this guy is ready to rumble. And so these guys, they, they come right up to us, and they're right in my face, and he's throwing the cigarette at me, and... and in my karate training, they, they told us, um, only fight when you have to. Try not to get in a fight. And I said, i got to find a way to get out of this fight. And so I didn't know Italian, but I had been saying these prayers of deliverance interiorly in my heart, quietly, over these men. And they didn't seem like the prayers were working, but because they were getting more and more angry, you know, maybe they were working. And this guy's right in my face, and he's got a cigarette in my face, and and he's like, he's like taunting me. He's trying to get me to fight him. And I looked at him and I said, Yo toco la batadilla, which is Spanish. And I'm hoping he knows Spanish. And you know what I said in Spanish? I said, I play the drums. <laughs> Unbelievably, this guy starts doing a drum rhythm on the seat in front of me. And I did one right back to him. We started going back and forth with the drum rhythms. He became my best buddy all of a sudden, you know? And, and Deacon George is ready for a fight. He looks at me and he's like, what just happened? I said, I don't know. He's my friend now, you know? So the rest of the ride was a fun time, actually. Good times, you know? But anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is this experience that I had is something also I will never forget that we can experience what is assigned to us of God's blessing, and then that seems to get attacked by something. Or we go through some trial that slowly starts to break us away from that peace. And Jesus says in the gospel, if we go to him, we're never going to hunger, and if we believe in him, we're never going to thirst. And I want to share to you two things that we need to try to do when in our life's journey, we're going back and forth 
from that experience of God's peace to that, that experience of that peace being ripped away from us, either quickly or slowly. First thing is this, when we have God's peace, when we are aware of God's blessings, we need to be thankful. I have this writing from Thomas Akempis. He has this book called The Imitation of Christ. And he says this, when God gives you spiritual comfort, take it and be thankful, mindful that it comes from God. So just that lesson for a moment. When you have things in your life that are really good, take those things, hold on to them, but thank God for them. Make sure that in your prayer, you thank God for them. Don't look at it as, look what I've arranged in my life. Look how good I've made my life. Don't do that. Thank God for them. Thank you, Lord, for all of these good things in my life. And then what do we do when it seems that those gifts are either taken away from us or our awareness of those gifts is taken away from us? Well, Thomas Akempis says this, when comfort is taken away from you, don't immediately give up hope. Be humble and patient about it and wait for the heavenly coming. God can give you back a consolation fuller than that you had before. So when we're in a situation where it seems that we have no peace and that we can't arrange our lives well enough to bring that peace back, we got to be patient and we have to be humble. Don't be angry. Don't turn against God. The Israelites did that. They started questioning God. We don't want to do that. Jesus tells us that if we go to him, we'll never hunger. If we believe in him, we'll never thirst. And so, brothers and sisters, it seems that our life's journey is one where we tend to go back and forth and experience God's peace and then experience trial and something attacking us, or many things attacking us. So think about what to do. Be thankful for all of the gifts and blessings that you have ever had in your life, even ones from the past and ones you have now. And when you don't have the gifts you feel that you need, be humble before God and be patient. Keep up your faith in your prayer to the Lord Jesus, because he promised that if we keep going to him, we're never going to hunger. And if we keep up believing in him, we will never thirst.